In today's video, I want to speak about the daily habits to learn and practice as a Christian. Number one, remind yourself of who your God is and who you are in Him. Because of the complexity of life, you need to be in constant recollection of who you are and who you are. Because sometimes you will just forget when things happen to you, who you are. You will even forget that you even have God, that you are even a person of faith. And that is why you need to learn these daily habits to be able to live life and reign in life such that you will not live life as a slave when you are a prince. God is your father and he is a king. And the Bible says you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's choice. So you cannot be a person or a human being, a family of God's choice and be living like a slave. So recently the Lord laid it in my heart to be praying for myself every morning to take on a new habit. And what is this habit? It is for me to pray for mercy and grace every day. So I have taken on this habit that when I wake up every morning, I go to God in prayer. Lord, I receive your mercy for today. Lord, I receive your grace for today. Lord, I receive favor and wisdom from you for today. Because scripture says, Lord, give us our daily bread. It did not say give us our weekly bread. He did not say give us our monthly bread. We need it daily because life is propagated day by day. And the secret behind this new habit is that God releases fresh grace each day. And I need fresh grace for each day. I do not need the grace of yesterday for today. I need the grace of today for today. I need God's mercy of today for today. Because every morning is mercy is anew. It is fresh and I need to receive it. The Bible says, They that receive of the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. And how can I receive this abundance of grace if I don't ask of God daily? That is why I need to go to him as scripture says in John 1 16 that of his fullness we receive from him grace and for grace which is grace upon grace like a wave that tosses upon another wave it keeps on coming so for me to be able to receive the abundance of god's grace i need to go to him daily lord i need your grace for today paul apostle said i labor more than they all but not i i am who i am by the grace of god even though i labored more than all other apostles it is not high but it is the grace of god that was present in me. So it is not of him that wills, but of God that showeth mercy. It is not of him that runs, that wins the race. It is time and chance. It is God putting you at the right place at the right time. So every day I wake up, I need to remind myself whose I am. I belong to Jesus. As if I am to stand against the mirror to speak to myself. Whenever I have issues, I can tell myself I belong to Jesus. Jesus loves me. I am not alone. I remind myself daily that the Lord's mercy is new every day and that for today, I need that mercy. I remind myself that I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I remind myself that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I remind myself that my life is in God's hand. My time is in God's hand. My future is in God's hand. I will remind myself that I am under God's protection and he has me edged on all sides. I am surrounded by the borders of God's mercy and grace. I remind myself that even though I cannot figure out everything, I can trust in God. I will even remind myself when I am worrying to bless the Lord. The psalmist said, I say to myself, praise the Lord. Everything that is in me, praise his holy name. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live in the land and prosper. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. That's Lamentations 3 verse 22 to 24. Number two, meditate on the word daily. This is another habit to imbibe. The fact is that this doesn't have to be like a religious routine of you just reading the Bible to complete your Bible plan, of you just waking up to your daily devotional to make sure that you read just as a religious routine. But it should be a conscious habit of you going at God as if to get a download. Like I'm reading this devotional to get a download from God. I am meditating on the word of God. Joshua 1.8 says, Study this book of instruction continually. 
Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Now, for you to be able to prosper and succeed in everything you do daily, the scripture says, meditate on the word of God. As it says in Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, which is for it to dwell in me richly, I must have meditated on the word till it finds a space to dwell. How do you meditate on the word of God? The word meditate in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 means to murmur or to mutter. So it would be right to say that if you know how to murmur, which is you got angry at somebody and you don't want to say what they can hear, you start speaking softly and indistinctly, even in anger. If you know how to murmur, you know how to meditate. Because meditating is speaking the word of God under your breath, muttering the word of God. The Bible says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You can be saying that under your breath, in your office, as you're on your decks, you can be meditating on the word of God by muttering the word of God. I know it could sound silly that you are just on your own, just muttering the word, just murmuring to yourself. Yeah, it could sound like that, but it is true. That is meditation. You can also talk about the aspect of you having to fill your mind with the word of God and go over it over and over again. Instead of murmuring about people, instead of having other things to murmur about, it is better to have the word of God to murmur about. Let this be the rumor that you speak about. Let this be the rumor which is true that you speak about. Because it is in this process of meditation that the Holy Spirit brings to your memory what Christ has said. Whenever you're struggling or going through something, the Holy Spirit will bring to your memory. As scripture says, the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. That is what Jesus said. But for the Holy Spirit to remind you of what Jesus has told you, you need to have meditated on what he said. What did he tell you? In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave his son as a propitiation for our sins. For what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Meditate on the word of God. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fears. Meditate on the love of God. As you're walking daily, there will be so many things that will distract you and make you feel like you're not loved by God. When you make mistakes, you feel like you're not loved by God. When you fail, you feel like you're not loved by God. When you go through hard times, you feel like God doesn't love you anymore. Because that is human for you to feel that. If God really loves me, I shouldn't be going through this. If God really loves me, this shouldn't happen to me. But let me encourage you. God loves you. Not the perfect you, but you just as you are. The Bible says God commended his love towards you and I while we were still sinners. Which is God loved us before we could even know what love meant. He loved us in our worst place. Even if we fell, we cannot be disqualified from his love. Your failings and your human tendencies cannot disqualify you from his love. Nothing can separate you from his love. Even when you feel far away from him, he is very close to you and his arms are wide open to embrace you just like the father to the prodigal son whom when the son came back, the father was running after him with open arms. That is the heart of your father to you. He loves you. You need to meditate on this love. This is a love that is unconditional, not based on you performing, but it's a love that came to you freely and you should receive it freely before jesus could even perform one miracle the father said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased today you and i are highly favored in the beloved we are accepted in the beloved we are seated in the heavenly places with the beloved and you need to meditate on the word of god to know that by grace you are saved not of works such that when the religious tendency of legalism start clouding your mind and you start feeling like because you did something wrong that God no more accepts you, you should know that there is no condemnation for you. That is why when you receive the grace of God, it cannot lead you to licentiousness. No way. Because this love that comes from God to you constrains you to do what is right. Constrains you to wear on this new nature. For if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That is what it does. It is not you that do it. It is the gospel. 
It is the power of God. Because scripture says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So it is not your strength. It is not your performing. It is not anything you can do of yourself. So today you can stand and say, I am the beloved son of God. And I am well pleasing in his sight. And if you can wear this habit every day, it will actually shape your life and shape your day and shape how you interact with your world. Number three, consider each day a new scene. Your life is a movie that God wrote and he funds it. God is the director. God is the executive producer. God is the producer of this movie. He is the writer. He is everything in the story of your life. And it is a privilege that you have to participate in this, that you sleep and wake up and still breathe again. That is a privilege. It is a privilege to continue to be a cast in this movie written by God. And it should be your place every day to go to God and ask for your script. And it's not like God will give you a scroll like read today. You have to do this. You have to do that. He will lead you through his spirit. That is why he gave the spirit to you as your counselor. So for you to be able to fulfill your purpose in life and live in the scripts that God has written for you. You need to go to God, who is your director, and the Holy Spirit, who is your compass. That is how you will be able to live life and fulfill your purpose daily. Because it is not yearly that when you wake up each morning, you should be vying to have a productive day. It should be a conscious thought in your mind, today has to be productive. Productivity in each day should be very relative. The fact that your day was not so exciting does not mean you do not have a productive day. Your productivity in each day should be, what did you learn today? Who did you help today? Who did you put a smile on their face today? What did you do today that made meaning? If you did anything meaningful, then you did something. Whether you called somebody up and checked on them and put a smile on their face, your day was productive. You did something for that day. It doesn't mean it should be this big achievement or this big thing, that big thing. But the contribution you can make to your world each day is a productive thing. Whatever thing you were able to learn, whether from a place of offense, you still learned something. Somebody offended you and you got to learn something new. Somebody disappointed you, you were frustrated and you got to learn something. But make sure you evaluate those experiences of each day and learn something from it. And in considering each day as a scene, which is, this is a new scene. We go again today. This is a new scene. I want to conquer this day. I would like to also touch on this. When people ask you, where do you see yourself in the next five years? You can only dream. You can only hope. You can only wish. But only God knows where you will be in the next five years. And what are you to do? This is a scene. As I wake up each day, I need to go to God for me to be able to achieve and be successful, I need to go to God in this scene and work with him to leave the script that he has prescribed for me. I don't want to leave a script that I designed for myself. I need to live by the design of the creator because he knows best. He knows what I am to be in the next five years. He knows what I am to be in the next 10 years. And if I do not follow him, I will not be able to be in line with all the design for me. And this is a call for you to take up responsibility each day. Some days God will ask you to just rest. Some days you need to work harder. But you need to work with God to be able to fulfill purpose in general. The scripture says, If you wait at wisdom's doorway, longing to hear a word for every day, joy will break forth within you as you listen for what I will say. For fountain of life pours into you every time that you find me. And this is the secret of growing in the delight and favor of the Lord. God united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy and freed us from sin. This is to say, Jesus is our wisdom. Every day you wake up to recognize and go to him, you receive a download of God because the favor of God is poured into you because you are going to his doorway to receive. And that is why Jesus said in Matthew, refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You take this life a day at a time. You don't go by it worrying about tomorrow. Live today and be present today. When you get to tomorrow, wake up each morning and go to your master and ask him for wisdom to do tomorrow. 
not for you to stay today and start worrying about what tomorrow will bring and what tomorrow will be like. Refuse to accept that worry. It is natural that it will come. You will feel worried, but refuse to take on that thought. And that is why you need to go to him and ask him to teach you to prioritize today. As you wake up each day, ask God, teach me to prioritize this day. Teach me to number my day. Teach me to account for my day. Teach me to make things that are particularly important, important. Not for me to take important things casual and then make casual things important. Because sometimes that's what we do in our lives. You could make having fun so important that creating and having to work on your future becomes a thing that is less important to you. So when you wake up each day and decide to work with Jesus, take up the cross of each day and take it a day at a time. Knowing that you don't live by your own design, but you live by the design of Christ. Paul said, the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. I hope this video is productive and is of value to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would like to see you in my next video. I am Uwe Mepan. This is my YouTube channel. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if this message is reaching you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.